Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox Graphics and today I will show you how to create this gem look in Cinema 4D. Chances are you have seen something similar to this already, but that may be obvious because it's such a fun thing to experiment with. So we are going to do it a bit different this time. We are going to start with the setup of the whole scene and then add the gem and the materials in it later. However, if you're curious about the exact settings of the preview, you can download the project files on our Patreon page. So let's start with the floor or the background. It could be anything of course, but let's just go with an infinite white floor. So we need a floor object for this and also a background object. Let's create a new material. This one can stay just white, but we're going to make it slightly more white because this is kind of gray by default. So let's go to something like 97 or 96 percent on this value. Let's drag it on both the floor and the background. If you would render now, it is just gray, of course. But there is also this seam if we see the horizon of the floor. So right click on the floor, go to Cinema 4D tags. Let's add the compositing tag. And in here we have this compositing background option. So let's check this. This means the floor and the background will flow into each other. So we have an infinite floor now. Okay, so that's the quick setup of the surroundings. Let's start with adding what will be the gem. You could use many different shapes, of course, but I think it is nice to start with a sphere object. Let's raise it up so it's above the floor. And we're going to set the type to something different than standard. Because if we look at the lines, at the top here you can see it is quite small and the parts at the sides are quite big. So let's change this to something like octahedron, which is more evenly spaced. Let's also decrease the segments to just 10 of them, so that's a more rough shape. Now we're going to make this more dynamic in the shape. We can even animate it if we want to. So to do that we're going to add a displacer deformer. Let's drag it under the sphere to make it have effect on the sphere. And under the object we can already set the height to something more like 100 centimeters. So that's roughly the size of the sphere actually. Um, that makes it more dynamic. But to make it have effect on the sphere, we need to add a shader to this. So let's go in here and add a noise for example. That's the most easy way to do it. And if we click on the thumbnail, we can just use the default noise. If you want to animate this, we can scroll down and set the animation speed. It could be anything you want. I would say we just go with one. And let's also add a loop period. And this is not in frames, but in seconds. So we have 90 frames on this timeline. Um, the frame rate is set at 30 frames per second, so that means we have 3 seconds of timeline. So let's add 3 in here, which means 3 seconds. So if we play this, this should be seamless. Yep, so that works, so let's continue. The shape right now is quite rough, um, but we also have some fong shading on this, so if we render, you can see some lines are disappearing. So what we want to do is disabling the fong tag if you want to. That would make it more rough, so you can see the lines on here again. But I still think there is more in this, so what you could do is adding a subdivision surface and drag the sphere inside of that, which makes it a big smooth blob again, which we don't want. So to compensate that, what I did was adding a bevel deformer. That's only in the newer versions of Cinema 4D, so if you don't have that, I recommend just updating your Cinema 4D, because you're missing out on a lot of stuff. Let's drag the bevel under the sphere, but make sure it's under the displacer. Okay, so now we can go ahead and change the settings in the bevel deformer. So the first thing we want to change is the bevel mode. So let's pick solid. And the offset of 1 cm is just fine for this scene. So now this is actually saying to the subdivision surface that it needs to see these edges as just a bit of smoothing. So if we disable this, you can see the actual topology which is an easy way to add rounded edges without actually modeling them. So it's dynamic with the animations right now. So let's re-enable that. You could pick a nice frame if you want to and also make sure the floor is uh, at the right height. Okay, so now we can continue with some of the materials. So let's create a new one. And this one will be the first glass version. I will show you two of them. I think the second one is a bit more nice looking than the first one. But let's start with the more classic one. So for this we can disable the color channel because it will be fully transparent. 
but we need to add the transparency of course. In here we want to set a refraction preset. It could be anything you like, it just gives a slightly different result. But I think the safest way to start off is just using the glass refraction. Okay, so that's all good. Maybe we can also decrease the brightness of the transparency, which actually means it is less transparent. So that gives us this darker hue. Also down here you have the absorption color, which basically is the color you see on the floor when the light is shining through the object. So it kind of depends what color you want the gem to look like. I'm going with something blue, so I can already set it to some very soft blue. One last thing you can also do is adding some blur to this, which makes it a bit more realistic. Let's also go to the reflectance options quickly. Under the default specular channel, we want to increase the specular strength a bit, so it's a bit more shiny. So let's go with 50%. And let's also do the same thing under the strength of the transparency itself. So 50%. Let's drag the material on top of there and see how this looks. So you can already see we have some kind of reflections and reflections going on. Um, it's not too spectacular just yet because we don't have any surroundings except the white floor. So that's the next step. We need to add some lights and something that refracts. So let's start off with the sky, which will be refracting, which also drives the color of the gem. So it's not on this material itself. It's in the surroundings. So we can do that with a sky object. And straight away we don't want to see it in the background because we want the white background. So let's go and right click on the sky. Go to Cinema 4D tags again and add the compositing tag. And we want to disable scene by camera. So that hides it for us. But the refractions and reflections will actually see the sky. So let's create a material for the sky. And for this one, we don't need any reflectance, we don't need a color, we want the luminance. Under the luminance, you could add anything you want. You could add a manual gradient, but um, you can also use images. I recommend using blurry images. For example, what I had to test out this effect at first was just a video of a very small render I had for something else. It's even an MP4. And what you can also do is adjusting the colors on this, because right now you can see this is quite bright, and you usually want something more on the dark spectrum. So if we have this texture loaded, we can go ahead and add a layer on this. So now that texture is the first layer inside of the system. And we can add an effect, which could be, for example, brightness, contrast, hue and saturation. But what I did was adding a gradient. And in here, you have some presets if you click on this arrow. So let's load a preset. And I went for this one, the dark one. So let's go outside of here and set a blending mode for this. I went with a uh, soft light, so it makes it more of a blue instead of a pink. And let's also decrease the intensity just a bit. And of course we could also play with the contrast of this. So maybe we can increase this quite a lot and make it even more dark. So we don't want the actual whites in this, we just want darker colors. Okay, so let's drag this on the sky object and let's take a look again what this gives. Okay, so that's not too much just yet. Maybe we can try disabling the background and the floor to see how this looks. Okay, so that defines where the issue is. So we need to figure out a way to hide the floor for this sky box. Okay, so if we go in the compositing tag of the floor object again, we can go down here and disable scene by transparency and scene by reflection. So that kind of solves the problem for us. Great, so it's a bit dark right now and a bit weird in colors, but we can make this a bit more special by adding lights to this. So let's go ahead and maybe start off with a target light. We're going to set the type of this to an area light. Maybe let's zoom out so we can see where it is. We want this to be at the right side for example. So that's easy if we use the target light, so it kind of always points towards the gem. Like this. We're also going to increase the intensity of this to 200%. And let's also add some area shadows to this. I'm also going to make a copy of this one and add it to the other side, so more uh, towards the back left side. But for this one we don't need the shadows because we don't want two different directions of the shadow. And we're also going to decrease the intensity back to 100%. For this one you could also add a hint of color on this. In this case that would be blue. So let's take a look at the render again. 
So now with the lights you can actually see why we added the subdivision surface, because now on the edges it is just that extra shiny part. In my opinion it is still a bit dark on some places, especially at the ground for example, and the lower parts. So we are going to compensate that by adding yet another light, and this one will just be an ambient illumination light. So at the bottom here we are going to check this, and we can also decrease the intensity of this to just 70% for example. And that should make it all a bit brighter and less dark on some parts. Also if the reflections are a bit too strong for you, you could go in the glass material and lower the specular strength on the values we just had. Okay, so that's the first one. It really depends on the sky material. So this one doesn't turn out that beautiful, um, but it really depends on the material, as I said. So let's go ahead with a second version. We can keep everything as we have it, but we're just going to change the materials. So I'm just going to duplicate the glass material. It should be fine as it is. But for this one, we are going to add some luminance to this. So let's enable this. And under here, we want to add a texture which will be the same one as the background actually. So what I did was going in Google Images and just search for a blur wallpaper. And you could use anything you want, but I would go with more of the dark ones like this one. And in Cinema 4D, we can just load the image as we wanted to. I had it right here, just load it in. Then we're going to the transparency tab. Everything can stay just the same as it was already but we're just going to enable the additive option. This will give it more of a milky, less transparent look, which actually looks nice. All the rest could stay the same. Maybe we can also increase the absorption distance. That's up to you. And we're also going to go to the reflectance tab and the specular could stay as it is, but let's make this just a bit less strong. In this case, you could do the same on the other one as well. Okay, so that's that. We're also going over one of the lights. For example, this main light with the shadow could be a bit less strong on the shadows. So let's go to the shadow tab and we're going to decrease the density to 50%. Also, if you want, you could change the color of this. So let's maybe try some very dark blue. Could look nice. Okay, so one last thing we need to do now is creating a second sky or just a copy of it. And we're going to load in a different image for this one which is also just the blur background we found on Google. So maybe let's make a different shape for this one, just to see how that looks. And render again. Of course, we need to add the materials to the objects. That's a bit silly of me. So personally, I like this look a bit more. It's more fresh looking, a bit icy. Of course, this result is not as perfect as the one at the beginning of the video. That is because you need to adjust the position of the lights until it is perfect. But I'm not going to do that in the tutorial because it's a lot of rendering and readjusting. It is just experimenting and seeing how it looks. However, if you're curious about the exact settings of the preview, you can download the project files on our Patreon page. So with that being said, that is all I wanted to show you today. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video.